In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to remove a logo or object from your videos using the content aware fill feature in Adobe After Effects. This effect is going to have mixed results completely dependent on your source footage as well as how long you want to spend perfecting the outcome. For example, if there's a tough object to mask around in front of what you're trying to remove, or if you're trying to remove something that's taking up a bunch of the screen, it probably won't work. But at some point in time, you're going to come across a client project where you have to use a specific specific shot and utilizing the content aware fill technique could be much more pleasing to your viewer as opposed to just sticking a huge Gaussian blur over a specific object. So with all that in mind, I'm going to give you a general overview of how this tool works and some tips to perfect the final outcome. So let's start with an example that most editors will probably face and that's removing the logo from the front of a computer. The first step is to track a mask to the logo throughout the entirety of the clip. After Effects has a plethora of options for you to do this, like manually drawing and keyframing the mask, right clicking on the mask and using the track mask, or tracking a null object to the logo with the tracker and parenting a shape to it. There's the roto brush and the list can go on and on. I'm not going to cover masking in this tutorial since it would take too long, so let's move on to the next step. With everything masked out, we're going to go to our content aware fill window. The fill target window is showing you what it wants to fill. So right here is where this Apple logo is. And here in the fill target window, that's where the alpha is. Alpha expansion is basically the same as mask expansion. It's just giving you an extra buffer of pixels outside the area of what you've already masked out. If you don't want any buffer, just do zero. Next, we have three different types of fill methods, starting with object, which is meant for filling the space of an object. Object. Surface is meant for filling in surfaces, so if you're filling in something like paper. And the third option is Edge Blend. It doesn't take as long to compute this effect, but the drawback is that it only looks at the pixels that's along the edge and blends them together. Most of the time I find that this effect just looks like you're adding Gaussian blur to whatever you're trying to mask out. To be honest, even if I am doing a surface or any other type of material, I always start with object just to see how it looks, and if that turns out well, then I just stick with it. If object doesn't work, then I'd switch to surface. If surface doesn't work, I try edge blend, but most of the time I just end up going with object. So even in this example, even though this is a surface of the computer, I'm just going to do object. In the newest version of After Effects, there's now the lighting correction option. And to be honest, I'm not as familiar with this section because it was just updated. But from what I understand, this will help the content aware feature compensate for shifts in lighting automatically over time. Here, it's allowing you to choose the strength at which you want to do that effect, strong, moderate, or subtle. I'm just going to stick with strong and see how that goes. For the range, if I choose entire duration, then it would be the entire clip here. And then if I chose work area, then it would only do the effect for where your ins and outs are here for the work area. But for this example, I want to do the entire clip and I'm also going to make my work area the entire clip. I'm going to show you how Create Reference Frame helps you fine tune how this effect looks in the next example, but we're going to skip it for now. And Generate Fill Layer is the last step. This is what is going to create the image sequence that will fill this gap of alpha. With all my parameters set and the alpha showing, I would want to hit Generate Fill Layer. What you don't want to happen is have no alpha showing, like right here in the fill target, there's nothing there. I haven't masked out anything as you can see. And if I were to hit Generate Fill Layer like this, this, it's going to give me an error. After Effects warning, all target frames are completely opaque, no holes to fill. So basically what it's telling me is that, hey, you didn't give me any alpha to fill, so what are you doing? What you need to do is make sure that you have your masked out area showing as alpha and then hit generate fill layer. And as you can see, it did a phenomenal job. Now, before moving on to a tougher example, I just want to make you aware of these different content aware fill options up here in this little sidebar. So if you were to click it, go to content aware fill settings. Here you have options on what your output depth would be 16 bits per channel or 32 bits per channel. The default is eight bits per channel. Your settings will probably be project relative. So right here, you could determine a path that you wanted to do, or if you wanted to go to a very specific place, like what I have here, you could click on absolute and then find the very specific place that it's going. This is also a good place to see where you're sending all of those still images. So if I were to down arrow this, this is all of those images that you just saw in PNG format. 
The other options here are create Photoshop reference frame, create Photoshop sequence for output. And besides knowing where you're sending all of these files, the other big one that I want to point out here is this auto manage unused fill footage. Every single time you create a new fill layer, it's going to create a completely new sequence of still images and all of that footage could stack up quickly. So you can auto manage that here. And another good feature to know about is delete unused fill footage. So if you aren't using that fill footage in any of your compositions, that's a good one to hit to free up some space on your disk. Now, in order to show you how creating reference frames can really elevate this effect, here's an example where I want to remove the couple and their shadow at the bottom of the frame. I do the same process of masking them out, but my final result doesn't look very good. So what I can do is create an edited version of what a frame should look like in Photoshop, and After Effects can then use that frame as a reference. Before I click reference frame, I need to uneyeball, turn off, or delete the fill layer that was just created. And I don't know if this is just my version of After Effects that does this, but the reference frame will not have any effect on your composition if you click create reference frame while the alpha is showing. It sends this still frame to Photoshop as it should, but after I create my edits, hit save and go back to After Effects, my reference frame still only has alpha where I want to have it filled in. If I move it to the top of the composition, it still has the alpha there. If I double click on the frame, it shows me black where the alpha is. And again, I don't know if this is just a glitch with my After Effects, but if I were to try and create a fill layer right now, it will not work as intended. But what I've found to work every time is making sure that no alpha is showing. So unenabling my mask and then hitting create reference frame. I go through, create my edit in Photoshop, hit save, and now it will appear as it should inside After Effects. I just have to go here and turn my mask back on so it can reveal that one single reference frame underneath my video layer. And just to show you, if I double click and solo out this layer in the window, you can see that there's no more alpha there and the frame looks exactly how it was edited inside Photoshop. And then when I go back to the composition, you can tell that it's just that one single frame that's filled in by me moving the playhead here. Now, if you really wanna sell this effect and make it look the best, you probably wanna create a reference frame every couple of frames. But for this tutorial, I think this will give you the general idea. I click generate fill layer and there you have it. We've removed the couple and their shadow from this shot. And just because we have the technology and to thank you for making it this far into the video, here is a random montage of me trying out the content aware filter on shots that you probably shouldn't use the content aware filter on. But hey, here they are anyway. Enjoy. If this video was helpful in any way, shape, or form, you could leave me a thumbs up. You can leave me a comment down below on what I should tutorialize next. And speaking of tutorializing things, there's probably another video on the screen right now that you could check out. If this is your first time here, you could hit the subscribe button. And until next time, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.